This video was brought to you by Incogni. Today, the EU backtracks on its suspension of Palestinian aid. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. announces an independent run for president, and China launches a nationwide effort to reverse its population decline. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Tuesday the 10th of October. First up today, the European Union has backpedaled on an earlier announcement that it was immediately suspending development aid for Palestine following the unprecedented attacks by Hamas on Israel. The EU's Commissioner for Hungary put out a seemingly surprise statement on Monday, announcing that all payments had been immediately suspended and all projects put under review. But just five hours later, the European Commission put out a statement saying that there were no suspension of payments. Now, this initial statement from Varelli sparked an internal EU row, with countries including Ireland, Spain, Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg voicing their opposition to suspending aid to Palestine, with the Irish Foreign Ministry saying that there was no legal basis for a unilateral decision of this kind from an individual commissioner. On top of this, the EU's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, said that the suspension of payments punishing the Palestinian people would have damaged the EU's interests in the region and would have only further emboldened terrorists. In its clarification statement, which also unequivocally condemned the terrorist attacks carried out by Hamas, the European Commission said that aid payments to Palestine were not being suspended, but that a review would be carried out to ensure that no EU funding was indirectly enabling any terrorist organisation to carry out attacks against Israel. And this is significant because the EU is one of the largest sources of aid and assistance to the Palestinian territories. And the Union had earlier reiterated that none of the assistance that it sends to Palestine goes to Hamas, and that contact with the terror group had been frozen for 16 years. Regardless, some individual EU countries have announced their own plans to halt sending assistance to Palestine. Austria's foreign minister, for example, said that we'll put all payments from the Austrian Development Corporation on ice for the time being. In other news from Israel and Palestine, the Israeli ministry said that it's restored full control of its border with the Gaza Strip. While Israel's defense minister has vowed on carrying out a complete siege of Gaza, adding that there'll be no electricity, no food, no water, no fuel, everything is closed for the territory of more than 2 million people. Meanwhile, Israel continues to bombard Gaza, striking more than 200 targets overnight, according to the Israeli military. At the time of writing, nearly 700 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli airstrikes, and Hamas has threatened to kill Israeli hostages, thought to total somewhere between 100 and 150 if Gazan civilians continue to be killed by the strikes. Simultaneously, the Israeli death toll from the attack by Hamas militants on Saturday has now risen to at least 900. Now, there's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us in your podcast app of choice to listen along. Over to the US now, where Robert F. Kennedy has ended his campaign for the Democratic presidential nomination, and instead has announced that he'll be running in the 2024 presidential election as an independent candidate. As the nephew of President John F. Kennedy and son of Senator Robert F. Kennedy, RFK Jr. has been the most recognizable figure challenging incumbent President Joe Biden for the 2024 Democratic primary candidacy. Formerly an environmental lawyer, RFK Jr. has more recently become known for his embracing of conspiracy theories, including his anti-vaccine advocacy. In part because of this, fellow Kennedy family members have spoken out against his candidacy, saying that he might share the name of our father, but he does not share the same values, vision or judgment. Now, while some Democrats are worried that an independent Kennedy campaign could siphon off some votes from Biden, it's clear that the Republican Party are worried too. Following his announcement, the Republican Party sent out an email titled 23 Reasons to Oppose RFK Jr., trying to paint him as a far-left Democrat by saying a Democrat in independence clothing is still a Democrat. He's not the only independent candidate in the race either, though. Prominent left-wing philosopher and activist Cornel West, who until recently was seeking the Green Party nomination, has announced that he will instead be running independently. 
It seems then that both West and RFK Jr. are set for an expensive and uphill battle to even get on the ballot across all 50 states. And the odds of them winning looks slimmer still. Next up, Myanmar's military has been accused of carrying out an aerial bombing of a displacement camp in the country's north that killed upwards of 30 people, including 13 children. With this camp housed in a town run by the rebel group called the Kachin Independence Army, or KIA. Now, Myanmar has been in turmoil since the military overthrew the elected civilian government in early 2021. And since then, opposition to the coup has turned into an armed resistance and even a full-scale civil war. During which, the military has been accused of increasingly using airstrikes and aerial attacks against its opponents, which include the armed wing of the exiled National Unity government and its allies, like the KIA and other local groups, which have been fighting for greater autonomy for decades. A report in August from the UN's Independent Investigative Mechanism for Myanmar found compelling evidence of the military junta and its allies engaging in more frequent and audacious war crimes and crimes against humanity, including indiscriminate attacks on civilians from aerial bombings, mass executions of civilians and detained combatants, and large-scale and intentional burnings of civilian homes and buildings. Next up, China's National Bureau of Statistics will hold a nationwide population survey in November in an attempt to better plan policies to boost the country's dwindling birth rate. According to the Bureau, the plan will help to accurately and timely monitor China's population developmental changes and provide a basis for the Communist Party and government to formulate national economic, societal development and population-related policies. Now, data released earlier this year shows that China's population declined in 2022 by around 8,500 people. The country's first recorded fall in population in 60 years. Now, this demographic crisis has become a major concern for policymakers in China, with the government scrapping its infamous one-child limit in 2015 in favor of a two-child limit and then further relaxing this to a three-child limit in 2021. The country has also taken other steps too, including the rollout of tax incentives, longer maternity leave, and housing subsidies, but so far to little avail. Now, China's aging and shrinking population is on a similar trajectory to other Asian economies, like Japan, where Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said that this year was now or never to tackle the country's population crisis. Finally today, a 42-year-old woman has been completely cured of bowel cancer after just six months of treatment with a new drug called Dostar Limbab. The drug is still being clinically trialed and targets a specific variant of colorectal cancer with a particular gene mutation, thought to make up between 3.5 and 5% of such cancers. But early data suggests a 100% success rate against a specific variant of the disease, and is certainly encouraging. A couple of years ago, I was the victim of identity theft, and I only found out when I got a court letter saying that I owed money to a broadband company at an address I'd never lived at. And I'm not alone here either, with victims of data breaches rising by 41.5% in 2022. Now, all of that stolen data is very often being added to commercial databases, with data brokers potentially aggregating your personal information, including your name and aliases, social security number, login credentials, home address, location history, online activity, and more, all of which is available for purchase by businesses and could fall into the hands of criminals too. Fortunately, though, Incogni are here to help. That's because Incogni reach out to data brokers on your behalf, request your data's removal, and deal with any objections. Plus, as brokers often continue to collect data even after takedown requests, Incogni continue to keep watch. So whenever a new record pops up on a data broker site, Incogni will automatically take care of that too. And even if you're not worried about your data being stolen, we all deal with endless junk mail and robocallers, both issues Incogni services could help cut down. 
So create an account using our link in the description, granting Cogni the ability to work on your behalf and sit back as they make you safer. Plus, by using our link, you'll get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thanks for checking them out, using our link, and thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video.